where did the Hebrew Bible come from? Or, how old is the Old Testament? An informed point of view. In the 18th and 19th centuries, European philosophers advanced several theories about the origins of the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, that led to a massive abandonment of faith amongst Jews and Gentiles alike. Some university professors began teaching new ideas such as the following. 1. The early Hebrews were illiterate, so they could not have written the Hebrew Scriptures. 2. No personage such as the prophet Moses ever existed, and there was no miraculous exodus from Egypt. 3. The Bible's creation myth and flood myth were borrowed from Akkadian and Babylonian religious sources. 4. There were competing Hebrew religious schools that composed their own scriptures, which were later combined and edited. 5. The Hebrew scriptural manuscripts were copied by hand so many times that mistakes, alterations, and additions have made today's Hebrew Bible corrupt and unbelievable. 6. Darwin and science have proved that we humans are the product of chance plus time, such that no god ever created an Adam or an Eve. 7. Since Jesus believed and affirmed the Hebrew Scriptures, Jesus was mistaken and is not to be trusted or believed. Unfortunately, those who abandoned their Bible and their faith in the only Savior, putting their faith in the assured results of science and higher criticism, may have forfeited their eternal soul. Research and discoveries from the mid-20th century to the present allow us today to better understand the history of the Hebrew Bible. In the guise of a brief overview, one can distinguish some general themes that have a basis in history and in extant manuscripts. Between the 20th and 15th centuries BCE, the Hebrews interacted intensely with pagan societies and religions whilst conserving their own historical details, composing their own texts, and embracing Yahweh, a unique deity unknown to pagan societies. The prophet Moses collected ancient texts, transcribed divine revelations, and issued laws that were written on tablets, on parchment, and perhaps on Egyptian papyrus paper. Throughout the following thousand years, these and new prophetic scriptures were preserved and edited under the inspiration of Yahweh's Holy Spirit. From the 6th century BCE, Israelite communities in Babylon adopted the Aramaic language and translated their scriptures in what they call Targum and later in Syriac language. During Israel's captivity in Babylon, pagan populations were forced to move into the Samaria region of Israel where they adopted faith in Yahweh and began copying the Hebrew scriptures for themselves. From the 5th century BCE, Israelite communities in Alexandria, Egypt, translated their scriptures into Greek. This includes the Septuagint and other Greek versions. Thus the oldest complete Jewish scriptures are in Greek, not in Hebrew. Israelite communities inside Israel, under Greek and Roman rule, conserved their scriptures in Greek, in Aramaic, and in Hebrew. The thousands of manuscripts and fragments found at Qumran and other ancient sites since the 1940s include all of these languages, as well as variations between Hebrew manuscripts. Until those discoveries were made, the oldest Hebrew Bibles dated from the 9th century CE. 
Now we have copies a thousand years older. Although these prove nearly identical, they conserve some important variants. This abundant evidence allows experts to discern lineages of copies in each language and to identify where variants were introduced. Thus, when you read the Old Testament in a modern translation that includes footnotes about the ancient texts, you can enjoy a certain confidence that you are reading scripture that is worthy of your faith and trust.